Welcome to Online Bible Class. Today we're going to be looking at a brief introduction of the book of Genesis. Nothing too long here, uh, nothing too involved, but it'll probably be, oh, maybe somewhere around 15 minutes. So let's dive in to the book of Genesis, an introduction to Genesis together. First of all, we want to think about the place of the book of Genesis in the scriptures. The Hebrew Bible, uh, the Bible, you think about the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible was divided into three sections by the Jewish people. Uh, they divided it into the law, the prophets, and the writings. And Jesus said in Luke 24, verse 44, he referred to the law, the prophets, and the Psalms, which was included in the writings. The writings included books like Job, Psalms, Proverbs, uh, the books of poetry, as we would call them, uh, were included in the writings. The law of prophets, Jesus said, that's all about him. That all pointed to him. He said that in Luke 24, verse 44. Now, our English Bible, the Bible that you and I use today, it divides the Old Testament up into five sections, really. You have the Pentateuch, or the Law of Moses, the first five books, Genesis through Deuteronomy. You have the books of history, which is Joshua all the way through Esther. Then you have the books of poetry, book of Job all the way through Song of Solomon, five major prophets, Isaiah through Daniel, and then 12 minor prophet books, Hosea through Malachi. Now, the Pentateuch, those first five books of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch is also sometimes called Torah. Torah is the Hebrew word for law or teaching. Uh, it's also, the Pentateuch is also sometimes called the law, and it is the foundation for all of the scriptures. Each book in the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, each book sort of introduces the one that follows it. Genesis is the beginning, but then from there on out, where each book ends is really kind of the jumping off point for the next book in the Pentateuch. For example, Genesis ends with the children of Israel in Egypt, and where Exodus begins, while it's a few hundred years later, Exodus begins with the children of Israel in Egypt. Genesis provides that background for how they got to be in Egypt in the first place and why God is delivering them just as he promised. And so that's sort of the idea of the place of Genesis in Scripture. It is the first book in the Bible, and it's the first book in the Pentateuch. Now, the title of the book of Genesis the name Genesis was the name given to the first book of the Scriptures by the Greek Septuagint version of the Old Testament. Sometimes you'll see it abbreviated as LXX. And this word that was used for Genesis, it means origin. It means beginning. And so the word Genesis, it means origin. It means the starting point. It means the beginning place. Now in Hebrew, it's a very similar meaning, but the title of the book is simply In the Beginning. What would often be done is they would take the first word or two from each book, and that was the name of the book. Well, the first word in Hebrew, in Genesis, means, in. it says, in the beginning. And so that was what they called the book. So the title of Genesis, its origin, its beginning. So it's pointing us to this is the starting point, this is the jumping off point, this is the foundation of everything that is to follow. Now, as we think about the purpose of Genesis, sort of blends right from the name of the book, as we've just been talking about. Genesis is the book of beginnings. In the book of Genesis, we read about the beginning of the universe and of the earth, the beginning of of you and me, the beginning of humanity, beginning of marriage and the family, beginning of sin, beginning of nations and languages, the beginning of our need for a Savior, the beginning of God unfolding His plan to redeem us, to save us, to, to show His glory to this world and to the people of this world. Genesis shows God's plan to bless and to redeem humanity through Abraham. The book of Genesis is foundational to understanding the rest of the scriptures. Genesis is a book about relationships between God and his creation, uh, relationships between God and people, and relationships among humanity, among people. It's a book about relationships that show what relationships should be, 
and the standard by which they should be measured, but it's also a book that shows how all too often relationships, especially among people, uh, are not what they ought to be. It's a book that shows that there is, Genesis is a book that shows there's only one God. And that one God, the creator of it all, is sovereign over everything and everyone. Genesis is a book that also introduces us to how God makes covenants with people, how he shows his love and his faithfulness to us through his covenant. It's also a book, Genesis introduces the concept, the idea, sort of lays the foundation of sacrifices, animal sacrifices we see in Genesis, but the idea of offering a life for a life is an extremely important concept as we go throughout the Bible. Now, as we think about now, turn our attention to the author of Genesis, both the Old and New Testament recognize Moses as the author of Genesis. And then that's thinking about not just Genesis, but Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The Old Testament, I've got three passages from the Old Testament and three passages from the New Testament I want to read to you. The first one that points to Moses as being the, the, the penman, the inspired penman, penman. We know that all of Scripture is the Word of God, 2 Timothy 3.16 Moses being the inspired penman, penman, though, Joshua 1, verse 7 through 8, says, Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. It's Joshua 1, 7 through 8, pointing then to Moses. Uh, 1 Kings 2, verse 3, And keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses. Once again, pointing back to Moses. That's 1 Kings 2, 3. And then the final Old Testament passage is 2 Chronicles 8, 12 through 13, where it says, Then Solomon offered burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of the Lord, which he had built before the vestibule, according to the daily rate, offering according to the commandment of Moses. Once again, the Old Testament Scriptures point back to Moses as being the inspired penman of the Pentateuch, the first five books. As you go into the New Testament, you see the same thing. They're pointing back to Moses. He's the one that wrote this stuff. Mark 7, verse 10, Jesus speaking said, For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. Pointing back to the book of Exodus and things that were written there and And the Pentateuch, and Jesus says, Moses said this in Luke 16, verse 29 through 31, in telling about the rich man and Lazarus, Jesus in telling that, said that Abraham said to him, said to the rich man burning in torments, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Once again, pointing back to the things that Moses and the prophets, that's pointing back to the Old Testament scriptures, the things that they wrote. And then John 5, verse 45 through verse 47. Jesus there says, Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? John 5, 45 through 47. Jesus points back to the writings of Moses, the things that Moses wrote. The New Testament and Old Testament are both very clear then. Moses is the the inspired penman that God used to write all or at least the vast majority of Genesis through the books of Deuteronomy. And so then we'll kind of leave off with now and kind of close our introduction of Genesis with an outline of the book. And Genesis can be broken down very briefly and very quickly into three main sections. You have the creation beginning in Genesis 1 verse 1, 
up into the fall. So the first two chapters of Genesis, it's all about how God has created this and he has put it all in order and it's called good, it's called very good. That's the first two chapters. Beginning in chapter 3 through chapter 11, verse 26, you have the fall, the sin of man, to Abraham. And in that section, chapter 3, verse 1, down through chapter 11, verse 26, you have a lot of... uh, a lot of sin that happens, a lot of very bad, tragic things that happen. You have Adam and Eve sin and being cast out of the Garden of Eden. You have Cain murdering his brother Abel. You have the tremendous sin upon the earth in the flood of Noah's day. You have the, the Tower of Babel that happens, the, dividing, the, the pride and the arrogance of mankind on display there. So a lot of tragic things happen in that stretch. But then beginning in chapter 11, verse 27... Through the end of the book, you have Abraham to Egypt. You have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, and they go down to Egypt. And there you see the promises of God now take center stage in his dealing with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And that the promises of God following on the heels of what man has done on man's sin You have all these promises of God, and God is pointing us forward to what he's going to do through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, his son on the cross. And so that's been a very brief introduction to the book of Genesis. I hope it will be helpful to you. I hope it will be encouraging to you and that we will grow in our faith together as we go forward this year in 2024 studying the book of Genesis.